No time wasted, not even to clip out the recording and start an icon. Let's go. I'm going to try not to cheese or steal that much from characters as I'm playing through this game. Why the hell does this kid have this amazing ring? Okay, okay, let's try to trade some stuff for it. Wait, 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 wait. We're like three adults and a human, and he's like 12. Let's just burglarize this guy. Just like stealing candy from a washing machine. I might as well rob the lockpicks. Uh, nope, nope, uh, no one noticed that. Best thief in the world. And let's get out of here. Who puts loose change in barrels? I never really understood this in RPGs. Do you find remnants of coins? Were there more before the ship even crashed? Why would the magisters then hoard their entire coin supply in barrels? It just makes no sense to me. I'm just skipping over this fight because, you know, it's kind of really easy with four people. I'm just going to roleplay with myself here. It's kind of silly to choose options for each individual character, but hey. Okay, women of my dream is right here. I'm just going around and looting, getting the darling bow and poison barrel like every time I've played this. Oh man, after this episode is done, it's going to be fresh content to make commentary on. I can't wait. Just got to make a few more crocodile puns and we're golden. Uh, Beast is in front because I'm going to use him as my navigator. I mean a uh, navy crocodile. I mean a uh, person who leads because he has lucky charm. Basically what was happening here was this chick was trying to get a leg up on the competition, but she failed. So they, they killed her. But hey, from her help, we're now a leg up too. Here we encounter our second waypoint, which means we can fast travel to it. I'm gonna sit down my poison barrel here, just so I have easy access wherever I go. And I'm gonna start looting around the city. How does a pile of wood have no logs? I'm going around as usual debating if I should actually steal any of those uh, clothing items that are on the ground just waiting to be stolen. Like those pigskin gloves or Nabor's boots or Griff's uh, plate armor or whatever. You know what? I'm a man. I don't need to steal. Let's just do this the old classic way. If you attack this guy and give him the Yarrow Flower, he'll give you a ring, which gives you restoration, which is super useful early. And we'll need it in like 30 seconds. Lucky Charm doing its magic. People have asked me if Lucky Charm was worth it overall. I mean, looking at the other civil skills, you might as well get it. It gives access to more loot, which you pretty much need to survive, or the option to sell it to buy better loot. It's like asking if you really need to make 150k a year versus 40k. Sure, you can get by with 40k, but why go out of your way to do so? Here in the background, I'm grabbing the Spear of Brachus Rex. Basically, you need to either play hide and seek with the kid to reveal where to dig, have a dwarf in your party to fit through the hole next to the location, cause he's short, <laughs> or have enough wits to dig as is. The skeleton tells you that the big bad guy from the first game did all this, and you should help him out. As a reward, you can keep the spear that's been imprisoning him for decades. I like how the entire time the kid didn't tell anybody about him to try to help him. Don't mind me, I'm just breaking through this barricade here. Oh wow, my weapon actually broke. Uh, this is probably the only time in the entire game this will happen. I'm just doing this to get the water barrel that's behind here. I really do not want to fight these frogs yet. And you probably don't want to hear my frog puns. Or so I've been told. So obviously 30 seconds later I'm here casting restoration on this guy. Uh, he gives you the sparkler card which I'll use to get the money from the gambling party and then probably will kill them. Gambling is bad for you. Shame on you loot crates. Before I take on EA and the Warner Brothers, I wanted to do a little inventory management to prepare for the fight, as well as poisoning all the weapons I have equipped for some extra damage. I found a pretty boss two-ended sword, but it did less damage than the spear, so I was fine with taking the accuracy penalty and keeping the spear, because I'm bossed like that. But you probably shouldn't. Accuracy affects skills hitting as well, such as Battle Slam, so it's probably vital for you to have as much accuracy as possible during an encounter. Here we lay down the I totally bought Shadow of War card that we got from restoring the previous guy. Warner Brothers then asks you from who did you get it from? I'll simply reply with it doesn't matter, because I totally didn't torrent it. <clears throat> Great success. Screw you and your randomized orcs. I proceeded with even more inventory management than before. Uh, pretty much overthinking everything because this is honor mode. I'll obviously lose if I don't put every item I can into wares. And here we go, we are prepping for the fight. 
I cast Alparm to produce a Blood Pool, and on this Blood Pool I cast all my Incarnates and my Elemental Totems right before the battle starts, so I don't have to actually waste AP to do some mid combat. So it's now Fane's turn, so I'm going to try to go in to do damage. Uh, looks like I have Chloroform. How much damage does it do? Yeah, it does a lot of damage. And it scales off Finesse and not Intelligence, so it's just a must-have skill for a Rogue. We got our Mage doing the basic combo. Poison plus Fire equals Explosions and Dead People. I'm summoning another totem with the ranger instead of actually attacking because the person next to the totem that I summoned has no magic armor left and I just want to make sure she dies. It looks like casting battle stomp on beast actually destroyed the book that's on the table, but whatever, it's fine. It's, it's not like we can reload anyways. I just realized how low of health Fane is, but thankfully they weren't smart enough to attack him. Rest of the fight is pretty self-explanatory. I just killed them before they killed me. That's that's pretty much how every fight's gonna go. Hopefully. Now it's just more looting, looting, looting. Getting your Middle Earth Shadow of War card back. This guy then talks to you and tries to convince you to kill some crocodiles, which we probably are not going to do yet. But hey, he tried. Spoiler alert, this is the guy who added uh, microtransactions to Battlefront 2, so we're probably going to go kill him later. That bastard killed my favorite lizard. Ooh, a pumpkin. Never mind. The only good lizard is a dead lizard. Ah, uh, this asshole. He's not aggressive since we don't have the Red Prince in our party, but we're still gonna kill him. To, to avenge that lizard. Yeah. Not a particularly interesting fight, as it's basically four dudes against one. It's pretty much a scene from Black.com. But we did get a pretty cool Elven Staff out of it. Just adding some more inventory management to your inventory management. Make sure you have Subble selected when you eat these limbs. You can actually eat these limbs as any of the races and they won't do anything, but yeah, it's it's just kind of sketchy. Walking along the beach here, you can talk to this crab if you have the pep pal perk. And the crab claims it has source powers and is the most powerful thing on this island. Since it claims to be pretty much be almost human, we're going to kill it because that's what we do when we kill humans. Hopefully if it's anything like the first game, the crab claws that they drop, we'll be able to combine it with leather helmets to make some badass crab helmets. I started selling all the junk items I picked up so far, uh, in the hopes of getting better gear as well as buying some skill books. There we go, look at Fane. No one will ever know he's a skeleton. I had a lot of junk to sell, but basically what I prioritize in buying is the adrenaline skill book for Fane, the battering ram skill book for beasts since I accidentally got bouncing shield instead and any cheap armor, which I really count as anything under 50 gold, so that at least my entire party is clothed, because they're running pretty naked right now. So now we run to the turtles. If you have the Red Prince in this conversation, it's like the funniest thing ever. She tells him that she's a slave, and he tells her to pack her bags because she's going to be his slave now. I don't know, maybe I have an absurd tasting humor. I can't read it yet. She nestles back into her spot. I don't know if I said this before, but try to trade with any NPC you see just in case they have some good loot because I think it's all randomized. 
as well as seeing if they have any kind of really cheap crafting supplies like soap, nails, or sticks. Most of those can actually be turned into either weapons or lockpicks, which can be actually sold for more than you buy them for. Just a tip. And here we have the turtle fight. Uh, but lots of commentators have pointed out that this is actually the easier fight. So yeah, let's get let's get started. Well, that totally is not foreshadowing at all. As you may notice, I did not prep at all before this fight. I didn't cast Encourage or prep any of my incarnates or totems. That's because I actually thought you could talk to the turtle and see what kind of conversation options there are, but sadly, sadly there's none. So, yeah. These turtles are really weak and have no magic armor, so if you're running a mage party, this is like a godsend to you. Even without a full mage party, Faint pretty much just almost killed the big one. For some reason, Beast only had a shield equipped, so I had to equip him back to the Spear of Truth. Probably because he knows he's going to be the most suicidal member of our party. This is a pretty basic fight because of how easy it is. I didn't actually expect it to be this easy. It's always a good idea to cast any kind of CC spells against the turtles so they don't actually get a chance to move. But I'm pretty much being way too cocky about this entire thing. Totally, totally cocky. Oh man, I love incarnates. I just spawned this incarnate as my last turn, but since it has such a high initiative, it will go first on the next turn. What the f***? Why, why did the turtle explode? W whatever. Using Fane, I can knock this turtle down, but we still have the problem with the turtle that's on the ledge. Hopefully, Losa can actually do some damage. Okay, the turtle's on fire, got some turtle soup going, and it's gone. Oh, wow, okay, that, that did way more damage than I expected. Easy peasy, man, under modes of breeze. Are, are you serious? <sighs> that's what I get for not shelling out for better armor. I'll, I'll see you in the next one.